Okay, let's talk about the last problem on this worksheet here. Uh, we've got this piece of equipment, some sort of recycling machine here, bought at a certain date with a certain value. We know it's got a residual value in four years of life. I don't think I need to go into the calculations for this. You should have been able to figure this out. 71.5 minus 4,500 divided by four. I believe it's 16,750 a year. What's the book value of the equipment on 2003? Well, if we bought at the beginning of 2000, we took full depreciation for this year and for this year and for this year. So it's three years worth. I would just multiply that number by three and get 5250. That's not the answer. That is the accumulated depreciation. I'm looking for the book value. So really, I need to skip down here and figure out the net book value as the original cost, 71500 minus the accumulated depreciation which gives me 21,250. That's the answer to, I think, um, B. Okay, 21,250. So that's my net book value at this point in time as of December 31st, 2002, oh, which is the same as January 1st, 2003. Now they say this stuff was sold on the next day for 18,000. Well, right off the bat, I hope this triggers something in your head. We sold it for 18,000. We said the net book value at this time was worth 21250 So clearly it looks like we did not get full price, at least according to the book value of the asset, which means there's going to be a loss. Okay. Now, I want to be very careful about number C here, or letter C, because building this journal entry is probably one of the harder things in this class. I want you to make sure you do it carefully and deliberately, because even if you don't get it right or if you struggle with it, you can reason it out, I think, with a little bit of uh, tips here. Okay. First thing is I write down what I know. I know I got cash to the tune of $18,000, so debit cash for $18,000. I know I got rid of uh, a piece of equipment and it's associated accumulated depreciation, which I already know. So when I get rid of equipment, remember it stays on the books as its original purchase price, which is $71,500. So I get rid of the machine. So I credit machine for $71,500. It comes off the books. As soon as it comes off our books, well, so does the accumulated depreciation, right? This is an asset account that goes up with a debit. When I write it down completely to zero with a credit, it's off the books. But when that goes off, this has to come off too. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. It goes up with a credit so that I'm writing it down to zero with this debit right here. Okay, so these two go together. The only reason it's interrupted by this other line in the middle is because I have to have all my debits first, then my first credit, and actually there's no other credits, okay? So this one here, let's let's assume that this didn't exist. Suppose you didn't know the answer already, okay? If I look at this journal entry, okay, if I look at this journal entry here, I know that I am going to need another debit or a credit. They don't balance. Well, 18,000 plus 50,250 looks to me like it's worth 68,250. Oh, that's 3,000. 250 short if my math is right and so if the debits are less than the credit or some of all the credits were there more than one credit then I would need to add enough dollars here to make sure debits equal credits there are no exceptions to that in any accounting class so I've got to understand what the answer to that is okay so that whatever the number was looks like it's a uh, 68,250. I'm going to need another 250 plus another 3,000. I think it was 3,250, right? I think it was 3,250 is what we decided here. Okay, and what type of account is that? Well, it's actually an owner's equity account called Loss on Disposal of Assets. That's what the DOA stands for, okay? Good phrase for this type of situation, but Loss on Disposal of Assets means this was a paper loss that we took Okay, this thing was supposedly worth 21250 on our books, but we only got 18000 Oh, by the way, what's 21250 minus 18000 Oh, it's 3250 Exactly the amount of my loss. Debits must equal credits. There you go. There's four different accounts, and I think you can see pretty easily that in this part D, which I won't do, they sold it for a slight gain. And so what happens here is this is the same. Book value is the same. This is a different and totally independent situation. 
instead of 18, they had a different buyer for 23. Well, clearly, that's going to be a gain of 23,000 minus 21,250. Looks like 2,000. No, it looks like $1,750 is the amount of the gain. And so what happens is this owner's equity account, which was a debit in Part C, would shift over to be a credit in Problem D. It would shift over and be called gain on disposal of assets. So I don't need to write that up, but that's how that works. Okay, I hope that helps you with that problem there.